What's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a piglin farm. I've got two different designs, and both of these let you get drops while you're in the overworld. So let's go ahead and get into it. So the first thing you want to do is to get on top of the nether. You don't have to, but it just makes it easier because you have a lot of real estate and open area to, to build something like this. So anyway, I'm going to build this portal roughly 20 blocks high. Um, it's a little off, and I caught that after I already made it. But uh, I'll show you the exact dimensions so it won't throw you off if it's gonna if you're gonna copy it. So uh, anyway, I'm making two portals, and that's very important because if you only make one, uh, sometimes the items actually don't register when you when you go through the portal or when they go through the portal. So you you need to double up, and you do that on the uh, the other side as well. So as you can see here, I've just got two matching portals. Okay, so let's go layer by layer. So I marked the uh, dimensions with torches. So uh, I've got blue torches at 0, 5, 10, 15, and 20. And so as you can see, the bottom of the portal is at 20. The bottom of this one on the Everworld is at 21. Okay, so I'm going from corner to corner. So just keep that in mind if you're trying to copy this exactly, because that will um, affect things just a little bit. Not much of a difference, but I, I would have liked to add that, that, uh, some continuity in that for sure. So you can see that I'm at the third red torch right here where the top of that terracotta is and that's where the items are going to are going to go through the portal and, and run into so your gold's going to hit that and fall straight down into this cobweb. So it doesn't have to be terracotta but um, again the terracotta right here are at the blue torch so that's at the fifth torch um, from that little system that we're using. So the cobweb's really important because it really slows down the, the gold and lets the piglins not miss the gold when it comes through. So that's really, really key on that. Um, if you did miss it, you'd get the gold back, but the farm's just a little bit less efficient. So just keep that in mind. So I've got the piglins surrounded by glass, and I have this little looping system. So the um, piglins are going to be standing on top of a hopper, and it's connected to a dropper right here. So you can see I'm at a level 8 uh, right here with the hopper connected into an observer and there's two observers right here they're going to be facing each other so the faces you can see the little faces right there are going to be facing each other that stone block right there i just pointed out it's important because it conducts the pulse through the comparator amplified by the repeater and it cycles back through to um, activate the dropper again and so that's how you get all your loot expelled now the signal does travel vertically but we need a slab right here in order to fit this pulse underneath so basically, we get a pulse right here, it travels down into the repeater, make sure that's on the last tick, and then we connect it to our sticky piston. And you can see that I'm at uh, the 12th torch right here where the sticky piston is, and so uh, this goes into a slime block that pushes items on top of the honey block. Yeah, you want to make sure that you have terracotta down here because the terracotta has a unique property where it doesn't stick to slime blocks or honey blocks. And also, honey blocks don't stick to slime blocks. But it's a lot to say. <laughs> but anyway, you can see the setup right here that the, the items fall down on top of the honey block. Uh, I know in my, my Reddit post I used uh, ender chest. You don't have to, and it's kind of counterintuitive. You wouldn't think that a honey block would be able to... You would think it would trap the items, but it actually works pretty good to propel the items uh, once they land on top of there. So what we just created on the right side, you can also create on this side. And you may ask, why would we do that? Well, it's just a little easier to do. Uh, it returns your gold to you on this side when it comes through. Now, one thing that's really important before you build any of this is to know that because of the randomness of these two portals, one side is going to have about 90% of your gold coming through it, and the other side is going to have about 10%. So the blue eyes, the packed eyes, this side right here, that's going to have the 10% less gold going to this side. So keep that in mind. You need to know which side is more powerful if you're going to do this single system. All right, guys, so let's move on to the more advanced version. I went ahead and decked this out to make it look pretty cool, and hopefully you can do something like this in your base as well. So to the left, I have the on and off switch that activates the entire system from the overworld, and I also have a uh, filling uh, mechanism. So you put it in this chest right here, and uh, basically your gold will travel vertically up to the top and be dispersed through the portal. Uh, you can see that uh, I have a few torches right here showing you the, the dimensions as well as right through here. 
So uh, pause the video if you need to, to check those out. Also, the stream right there, that is to catch the weaker side of the drops. If you remember me mentioning earlier, earlier uh, one side has less output than the other, so that's very important to know. So this thing looks complicated, but uh, we can dissect it piece by piece so it's not, not overwhelming. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and, and get into it. So I want you guys to ignore the redstone block right there. That's part of the uh, on and off switch. Let's focus on the left side right here. So just copy the clock from the first contraption. And the only thing that's really changed is the output. So here's the left side output. Um, and so what we have here is we have some redstone that goes down to the, the bottom piston down here and they're on a delay. And so you can see I go uh, two blocks down and I have a sticky piston and this one connects to the slime block. So you want that one to fire last because that's your lower piston, right? So you can see right here that we, we have some terracotta as well. And so that means that the block won't stick uh, to the, the slime block. All right, so just real quick, I wanna help you with your positioning right here. So I'm gonna put a blue torch right here in the center of the portal just like this and to the left and right uh, I'm gonna put some extra torches just so you have have reference so the the eyes right there should be one below the the top of the portal frame and you can see the relation as well okay so hopefully that makes sense let's go back up here and continue uh, tracking this so this piston up here connected to the honey block doesn't have any repeaters on it and that's because it fires first you want uh, to do the same thing on the other side you don't have to copy this exactly you just have to get the concept down um, that you need two pistons like this in this orientation where the top one fires before the bottom one uh, if, if it's too short of a time between those two firings then you're gonna lose some items so make sure you have a good flow you can test it out and uh, see if you can make it pretty efficient so if we go up here, you can see that um, I've got the redstone block again and again. That's the part of the off and on switch. You don't have to have that. Uh, we go through the right output. You don't have to have this observer. That's for part of the gold storage system. And I can get into that shortly. So ignore that one for now. Anyway, same thing as the other side. See, we have two repeaters and they go into this lower piston. And they're both uh, locked back on their, uh, their, uh, their last tick right there so that we uh, delay that piston from firing. So you can see the relation again. Just want to be clear how that, that appears. And then we come back up here and here's the, the first pulse right here. It'll go into that, that top piston with the honey. Again, it's on top of the, the uh, inner chest right there, a, a, an entity that doesn't move. And you can see the relation of the dispenser. It's like that on both sides. And so that's where your, your gold's going to be coming from. Uh, we continue the pulse. I have this dual system for the dispenser. So when the left output of the clock fires, uh, it'll activate both uh, of these droppers. And when the right side of the clock fires, it'll fire them as well. So you're getting uh, double the pulse with your, your droppers right here, if that makes sense. So basically, you just dispense gold faster. All right, so let's see what's going on on the other side. So again, this portal, uh, the nether side, is gonna have gold coming through, but one side is gonna be stronger than the other, so you need to find out what side is stronger. But in this case, it, it doesn't matter as much, but we do have one side that that uh, is designed for a higher gold output. So right here, I'm just giving you some reference to, to help you build this. Uh, so let's check out this weaker side right here. So this is actually the side with, where there's less gold coming in. So again, we have uh, two columns of terracotta. It can be any block, and that's just to catch the gold. And the gold is going to uh, hit the wall and fall down into the cobwebs below. So uh, let's go down a little bit further right here. You can see the reference right there. I'm about three. I'm the, the third block is where the, those little towers start. Uh, and there's a space in between so if we go down it's pretty much the same thing as we've done in the first farm design so just copy that so we have the hopper into the dropper into this block the power goes through here and cycles through 
Uh, same thing as the other side. There's only a space in between, or one block in between these two setups. Uh, what's different is the redstone down here. So it goes into redstone dust, into a repeater, into another repeater, and both of these are on their last their last tick. Uh, they go into a sticky piston connected to the slime block, and the dropper is um, the second block above, and that's for the, the other side as well. And so, um, so yeah, so that th this helps delay the uh, the sticky pistons, so they're they're not uh, they're not overloading. The items right here, because if you if you go too fast with the sticky pistons, then you actually lose lose some items. So this is the side of the Nether portal that has more volume of cold uh, coming through it. So you are going to need to be able to disperse some of that uh, gold across more hoppers. And to do this, you need to have some minecarts with hoppers in them. And so we are going to spread it out between ten hoppers right here. So uh, let's go ahead and, and take a look about how we set this up, because it's a little tricky, but it's not too bad. Okay, so I'm going to let you watch how I do this, but just keep in mind that the hoppers above are where the piglins are standing. So you want to make sure your uh, first blocks are directly below those. So regular pistons right here, chains beside it, and you're going to put rails on top and carts. Okay, so this part's a little bit tricky, so you need the rail sideways like this, and you need to put two hoppers in the same spot, walk into it, and they should split off. But in this case it didn't, so if that happens, you need to go ahead and reset. Go ahead and put it on there again, put two hoppers in the same spot, walk into it, be careful, and get rid of the railing right here. Okay. Okay, now you just want to encase the uh, minecarts with a block. Uh, I choose glass just because I can see if something uh, is off with the minecarts. And the, the blocks right here just protect uh, something from going wrong. So if, if you accidentally nudge one of those cards, it could throw off the, the whole system. Okay, so going back up to my setup right here, you can see the hoppers are covering all of the, uh, all of the hoppers right here. I think on the, the setup down there, I had one hopper that wasn't covered. It's not a huge deal, but uh, if you can, try to get, make sure that all of those are, are covered effectively. So if we go down here, this is a little bit different too. So I have a uh, two observer setup that has uh, um, redstone connected to it, and it's connected to one single sticky piston. And this sticky piston is connected to five slime blocks. And basically this bottom setup right here modulates the rate at which the, the items are pushed out into your overworld. So you can see the droppers right here are one block above the slime blocks, and the terracotta again prevents any sticking uh, uh, that might mess up the system. So I'm going to let this roll for a few seconds without talking. I'm just going to let you see the dimensions with, with some torches and blocks so you can have better perspective when you're actually building this thing. Okay, so let's focus on some completely optional features, but they, they make for a really cool addition if you can do it. So let's focus on the on and off switch right here. So I have a redstone block connected to a sticky piston, which is powered by these series of 
observers, each with a powered rail on top of those. You can also use redstone discs in, in place of those as well. So on the other side of this wall, I have the lever, which turns the system on and off. So this lever essentially activates the nether when you push it. So it travels into a repeater, and that signal tra travels up. And I'll go ahead and make the switch right here. OK, and that should turn the system on because the redstone retracted and it allows the clock to resume normal functioning. So yeah, pretty cool. OK, and now let's focus on the gold dispensary. So basically we could load up gold from down here at the bottom level and we can have the dispenser uh, disperse gold through this bubble column right here. So you can see the dispenser right here and with soul sand at the bottom of it when you put water uh, above it, it'll actually propel items uh, vertically up this way. So you can see I take the column right here, I go up, uh, I've got a block up here. Anyway, so I've got the, the water at the top and that just pulls it over the hoppers in uh, one direction or the other. And so uh, these hoppers each go into the chest over there to, to basically uh, reload them. And so I have the same hopper set up. Uh, if you remember in the earlier in the video, I had that hopper that uh, was there for a reason. Uh, and so basically we're, we're going to kind of double up with the clock right there and, and utilize it so that we can uh, get that, that uh, those, those gold come through there. Okay, so you may be wondering how to get the picklins up here. Well, uh, in order to do this in survival, uh, you'll need regular blocks for them to spawn on. So you notice right behind me, I have a, to the left, I have a stone platform and and that lets them spawn occasionally. So uh, any, anyway, you keep leaving the area and coming back and eventually you may get lucky and have some, some piglins right here. So anyway, you, you need to get them up here with a rail cart system uh, and make sure you name them and that helps them not despawn. Uh, and so yeah, so you need to get uh, quite a few up here to, to increase your rates. For the first farm, I would probably do one to three piglins to start out with and see, see what happens. It also depends on your clock speed. For the uh, second farm, you probably want to do 15 to 20 piglins. I know that's a lot, but just just be pa patient with it. It's it's going to be worth it. Uh, so so yeah. So again, make sure you you have more piglins on the side where uh, there's a higher gold output. So uh, that's very important because your your rates will will decrease if you if you don't do that. All right, guys. So that's the end of the video. Uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed uh, what I did here hit the like button and let me know. This is my first YouTube video, so uh, if you guys enjoy this sort of thing and want to see uh, some more cool concepts or, or ideas, just uh, show your support. And if something didn't make sense, just comment below and I'll, I'll try to clear things up for you. All right, until next time. Take care, guys.